this phenomenon, um, as it were, is really capturing people's imagination. And, you know, all, all technology breakthroughs have a sense of magic, and this certainly has that. You want to set your own set of rules. You set your own guardrails. So you're the first mover, but with a conscience. In many respects, it could be, you know, as big as the the launch of the internet or the commercialization of the internet in the in the late 90s or mid 90s. Um, I think we're in in a, a new phase of of innovation that's absolutely radical. It's not just for image creation or text creation. Obviously, ChatGPT has has built a strong association between text and generative AI, but you can create amazing images, amazing audio, video, and it is moving incredibly fast. It's the ability to accelerate and react to whatever's happening in the world today and really quickly be able to deliver something you know, creative. So I think that for me is, is probably the biggest benefit. I guess a new frontier for us in, in the space of creativity is looking at ways in which we can use this technology to actually create new fashion uh, for our customers. And I think that's an exciting space uh, for us and our business to explore. Um, and you know the speed by which we can experiment with new types of trends and new types of fashion, how we can roll that out. I think that's an exciting space for us to do. What we would say from a legal perspective is transparency, transparency, transparency. Transparency with the vendors you're working with, the third parties, um, understanding how they've built their tools and systems. It really is crucial and having some really nitty gritty discussions around how they've trained their tools. So then when you come to use it, you can think carefully about your inputs into it. You know, the data privacy laws, which are now global, which are all equivalent really to the GDPR, they apply to what we're inputting into the system. So think really carefully. You know, I don't think it's complex legal theories, frankly, it's common sense. This is an evolution that will that will come and, and people will become more thoughtful about this and they'll become more sensible about, about you know, what third parties they, they work with and understanding, you know, where the data comes from. Um, but at the moment, I mean, it, it is a, it is an incredibly open-ended and, and, you know, fruitful kind of, you know, space to explore. You can't really um, work with these technologies at enterprise level if you don't have people who can, yeah, you know, definitely. fine tune models or, you know, who understand, you know, um, at a sort of a very sophisticated level, you know, how encoding and decoding transformers, etc., work. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, and, and to fill that gap, I mean, we've actually invested in WPP um, over the last few years quite significantly, not only in, in training our people, but also um, acquiring kind of, you know, primary AR research um, capabilities. So we bought a business here in London called Citalia, um, who are a relatively small team compared to the rest of our business. It's only 150 people, but, you know, very, very high end sort of, you know, academic PhD level researchers in, in, in AI. Even in the data space, someone who could bring different data sets to life, think about new use cases, make it more accessible to non-data practitioners. And I think the same for this, you know, you talk about prompt engineer, I've heard it being called an AI whisperer. Oh, uh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's mm, nice. Brilliant. You have that on your LinkedIn, don't yeah. you? Absolutely. But I, I do think actually being able to translate this into something commercial or meaningful to business. One, one way um, thinking about it is that the, the prompt is the new art direction. Yeah. And and in order to be a good art director, you know, or creative director, you need to you need to have you know formal training in 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 art and design and visual culture and photography and film and editing, and and these are you know so the the the, the base creative prompting that's being done is not being done by amateurs. It's being done by people who are professionals. It, it doesn't take away the need for those for those kind of original humanities, um, you know, and sort of an human insight type type skill sets, right? And and um, and and I think that's what our people are seeing as well, right? It's that it, it, in a way it actually rewards um, yeah, expertise in that in that area um, rather than 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 discount it or, or kind of compete with it. And I think this is this is exactly why we talk about it as man and machine because you know you need both in order for for anything good to come out of this. The connectivity that we have today and that powerful device that you have in your pocket all the time, it is starting to give us leisure time or freedom or enable us to choose when we are productive around work, etc. So I, I see this as, as freeing us up to do more valuable work. But the key point is, is that it requires a new a new training agenda and it requires a new education you know kind yeah. of path because ultimately the people 
that understand how to use these tools and these skills you know, will be advantage over those people that aren't. It's very easy from a technology perspective to say, yes, we understand the technology and we know how to work it, then we know where the levers are and how we manage the controls. But when you take your average buying and merchandising yeah. um, <clears throat> manager, educating and taking them on the cultural journey within an organisation or your average finance analyst or, or marketing execs, it's, it's a big organisation of cultural change to help people understand what's possible, but also demystify some of the hype. Uh, so people are are embracing of the use of those technologies and, and embracing that in the, in the work that they do. So I think organizationally, there's a quite a lot of change required in training, you know, from in terms of the education, but also businesses at all levels, understanding what's possible. So it's not just a responsibility of the technology teams to, to kind of manage um, and educate and inspire but everyone is embracing of that. What you're starting to see is, is you know, AI being fundamental to the tools and, and the platforms and, the, and, and, you know, the capability that, that we are releasing. Um, I, I think, you know, as I said earlier, our, our mission to help people achieve more, AI is naturally leading that and making that possible. You know, we're going to see more amazing creative work we're going to see fantastic you know um sort of um uh, you know visual um outputs we're going to see people you know connect you know the sort of human insights with creativity as we spoke earlier um, and that's all going to be above the surface as it were right but below the surface um we're going to be adopting generative ai in business processes and automating business processes at a rate that i don't think we've ever seen